What to do if your phone gets wet? Oh no! We've all been there. Jumped in a pool without remembering to take your phone out of your pocket? Oops. Doing dishes and dropped your phone in a bowl of soapy water? Yikes! Caught out in the rain without an umbrella? Oh man! Water is your phone's worst enemy, capable of wiping out all your pictures and stored data. What can you do to fix this dire situation? Relax! Here at Brightside, we've put together a list of things you can do to try to save your phone. There's a good chance you can resuscitate your drowned phone without doing mouth to mouth. Number one, take it out of the liquid immediately. Okay, you've probably already thought of this one, but in case you didn't, grab your phone immediately. The more exposure your phone has to the water, the more water will get inside the case and damage the internal components. So the sooner you fish it out, the better. It's easy to get freaked out the second your phone touches water. You think that it's ruined, but that's not the case. Lots of factors can determine how much damage exposure to water will do to your phone. If the water is particularly clean, for instance, that may cause less damage. Salt water is especially hard on a phone. A high salt or sugar concentration in the water, such as if you drop your phone in a glass of soda, will cause more damage. It's even worse if salt or sugar gets trapped in your phone as they become corrosive and can damage the components. Number two, turn it off. Your phone will probably turn itself off as soon as it falls into liquid. If it doesn't, make sure you turn it off immediately. If the power stays on, the phone runs the risk of short-circuiting, which will cause more damage to the mechanisms inside. If the phone is asleep, leave it asleep. If the power button doesn't work or it's taking too long, you might be able to take out the battery to shut it off. Speaking of which, number three, remove the battery. If you have an iPhone or another phone that doesn't let you remove the battery, skip this step. But if you can take the battery out, do it immediately. Removing the energy supply will help prevent the phone from being fried. Worried about shocks? Cell phone batteries typically do not carry enough electrical currents to hurt you. Most electric shocks involving consumer electronics have to do with overloaded power outlets, frayed cords, or bad wiring, not the devices themselves. Whatever you do, do not plug your phone in while it's wet. Your wall outlet carries a much stronger current than the phone battery. Not only will plugging in a wet phone almost certainly destroy the phone, but you could shock yourself as well, or start a fire. If you're really worried about shocking yourself, use a pair of rubber gloves. Number four, remove the SIM card, memory card, and all peripherals. Empty out your phone. Take out the SIM card and memory card if you can. An iPhone will only allow you to remove the SIM card, so do that. Unplug your headphones. Remove all the covers and plugs that cover the charging port, headphone port, or any gap or slots in the phone. These can trap moisture inside the phone or be damaged themselves. Some of these peripherals might need to be dried as well. It's less likely that they'll suffer as much damage from water as your phone will because their electronics usually aren't as complex. For example, your headphones will probably be just fine. Dry them with a towel, remove the earpieces, shake out the moisture, and let them dry on their own for 48 hours. For a SIM card, short exposure is unlikely to damage the card. Dry it off and leave it on a paper towel overnight. The same goes for a memory card. The key is to take it out of the water and let it dry. Number five, dry the phone with a cloth or microfiber towel. Pat your phone gently dry with a cloth or microfiber towel. You should avoid using paper as particles can come loose and clog up the ports of the phone. That takes care of drying the external surface of the phone, but what if the moisture got inside? Now it's time to get creative. Number six, don't use an oven, microwave, or hair dryer. Who doesn't love a good explosion, right? Well, don't put your phone in an oven or a microwave unless you want to cause an electrical storm that will destroy your phone and make a huge mess of your kitchen. There's a reason we don't expose metal to microwave radiation. You probably already thought of that, but consider something similar but less obvious, hair dryers. Some people swear by using a hair dryer to evaporate moisture in their phone, but watch out. 
The heat produced by a hairdryer can cause significant damage to the internal components of your phone, and vaporizing the moisture inside the phone can just spread it further. Try something else. Number seven, gently shake your phone dry. Shaking your phone can get rid of a lot of those pesky droplets of moisture stuck inside the phone. Be sure not to drop the phone while you're doing this. This won't be enough to dry out your phone, however. Shaking it only gets rid of the surface moisture, and there might still be moisture inside that you need to get rid of. Before you turn the phone on, you're going to need to do some work. Number eight, put the phone in a vacuum bag. Use suction to extract water stuck inside your phone, especially in those parts that are tough to access. Unless you're in a science lab, you probably don't have a vacuum generating tube. Though if you do, try that. Otherwise, put the phone in a plastic bag and suck out the air with a vacuum cleaner or shop vac. Hopefully, this will suck the liquid right out of the inner parts of the phone. Number nine, put it in a bowl of rice or another absorbent material. Yeah, this one sounds like a myth, but it's 100% true. Since you won't be able to dry the internal parts of the foam by hand, you want to put your phone in something that will pull the moisture out. Uncooked rice is naturally absorbent, and water can flow right out of the phone and into the rice. Put the phone and all its parts in a bowl or jar of rice and leave it there for at least 48 hours, or longer if you're not sure it's dry. Another material specifically designed to keep things dry is the gel substance you find in silica sachets, like those little packets you find in plastic containers of vitamins, shoe boxes, or dry foods like jerky. Surrounding your phone with a few of these packets might do the trick. Careful, do not tear them open or consume them. We all know salt absorbs water, but do not use salt for this purpose. A salt solution will corrode your phone's components. Sand works too, but the grains can be fine enough that they get inside your phone's ports and cause more damage. You can also use kitty litter, but don't use an active litter box, obviously. Number 10, clean the phone with rubbing alcohol. If you submerge your phone in something other than water, such as mud, coffee, soda, juice, spaghetti sauce, or something gross, you may need to do some manual cleaning if you're going to regain functionality. Disassemble the phone and swab the phone clean with isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. You can also try submerging your phone in circuit safe cleaner or pure grain alcohol, which will absorb the moisture, clean any impurities, and ultimately evaporate without leaving a conductive residue. If you give your phone an alcohol bath, dry it as normal for at least 48 hours. Number 11, store your phone in a safe, dry place. This probably seems obvious, but the last thing you want is your phone to be exposed to more moisture while it's drying. Don't keep the phone in a jar of rice next to the sink or washing machine, for instance, where accidents can happen. Put it in a cupboard or a room with no sink or window. If the jar has a lid, put the lid on. Number 12, wait. Phones need time to dry. Even if you don't put it in an absorbent material, you need to wait and give your phone time to dry out before you try to use it again. Even if a single water particle remains in the phone, it could lead to significant damage when you try to turn it on. It is very, very important to give your phone at least two days to dry. You're going to have to live without a phone temporarily. What to do? Read a book, go outside, catch up on some work if you've been procrastinating. Hang out with friends, but make it clear they can't text or call you right now. Tell jokes about not having a phone, which can make you feel a lot better and distract you from worrying about whether your phone has been saved. Number 13, while you're waiting, check your warranty. Water damage voids most cell phone warranty plans because the manufacturer often cannot plan for submersion events. It's possible, however, that you have your warranty through a third-party vendor such as Asurion or Square Trade. They might cover accidental spills or submersion. If so, file a claim immediately, even if the phone appears to be working, as it's always possible that it will manifest damage later. Number 14, turn it on and cross your fingers. Once you're sure your phone is dry, you can plug it back in and try to turn it on. If it powers up, you're in business. If not, well, it's probably fried and not going to come back. We're not gonna sugarcoat it for you. Water can inflict catastrophic damage on your phone. Even if it comes back, it might not work in quite the same way as before. 
Water damage can lead to rebooting loops, where your phone tries to boot up, fails a particular process, and restarts. Persistent freezing, distorted images, malfunctioning processes, or any number of hazards. But we here at Brightside are very optimistic and hope for a positive outcome. If you've done everything you can to maximize your chances of a rescued phone, then there's a chance your phone will work out fine. You might be surprised. Well, did you manage to rescue your phone after its little dip? Is it coming back on? Malfunctioning in some way? Tell us about it in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button to stay on the bright side of life.